Hello and welcome to this video being recorded on the 4th of July. Happy birthday America. And um, this is a most important video with information that everybody needs to know. It's about the colour of your eyes, which I've done a video on before called Secrets Unveiled, Eye Colour and the Karma and the Land. Now this was one of my first theories that I got when I started speaking to God so it's quite important to me and it's all about the mark of Cain uh, in the Bible in the in the beginning you know Cain and Abel had a fight and therefore Cain was punished and he was given this mark so that anyone who would see him would know and my theory was that this mark would carry on it would also then apply to Cain's sons and children and that would stick and how what better mark could you have than a different color eye to everybody else so then a little bit later on and I said that was green eyes and then a little bit later on a couple of generations later Lamech he also does something bad he takes to himself two wives what when when everybody should have one and he took two and um, then he's then he it says in the Bible if Cain be avenged sevenfold I will be avenged seven times sevenfold uh, or seven sevenfold and for uh, a man I would kill a man for a man striking me, something like that, right? So the karma, if, if somebody hit him for no reason, they would die because the karma would be so strong. So it was talking about karma. But also with this additional karma, because this is a blessing and a curse in a sense, also with this additional karma comes the curse. And the curse for Cain was the land would not yield its wealth to him. He couldn't just profit from things growing out the ground. So, uh, you know, Cain didn't do farming. Cain, Cain went and built the first city, apparently, right? First city, whatever. Now, since I've done this theory, I've, I've come on to some uh, more information about what, what was going on at this time. What are the true secrets about um you know our, our origins if you like and something that's recently come out is this uh, eye of africa uh, which is in mauritania it's about 13 foot, foot 1300 feet up in the air above sea level um at the moment now 10,000 years ago, it's possible, we don't know, even though the sea levels were apparently a bit lower then, um, Africa may have been lower than it is. So in other words, Africa has risen. And because of all the evidence as to why this eye of Africa here looks just like Atlantis is described, um, and if Africa was a bit lower in the sea, this thing would have been quite near the sea. There would have actually been sea in between um, the Sahara Desert. You know, Africa wouldn't have just looked like one big continent. They would look like um, it's not islands, but that where Mauritania is would have been an island. And they could have sailed there. Now... The story goes that Atlantis was uh, sunken, okay? And there's evidence that there, um, still now there's evidence to be seen on the land where you've got this massive tsunami um, and Atlantis could have been completely sunk in mud. Now, Atlantis was a very interesting place, a geological um apparently natural volcano type thing but it had something in the middle 
and then water around that and then another ring of sort of where the high people were living and then another water and then another ring where the commoners lived or the main city was and that bit in the middle was kind of basically untouched some sort of natural uh, paradise just like Eden so these things were going on that we got written in the Bible there's some truth in them and and it could explain why some people have blue eyes and it explains a lot of our history okay let's let's continue with that well let me just put out put out the theory first all right so you've got um atlantis gets sunken uh, in this um when we came out the last ice age flood whatever just like noah's flood uh, the majority of them um went round the well they wouldn't have had to go around the south of africa to get to where persia is now the gulf of persia anyway they got there and they became the sumerians and they carried on civilization with their knowledge from there they passed their knowledge on to the egyptians who the Greeks borrowed it from, and then the Romans borrowed it from the Greeks, and they've kept it secret. Now, all this while, what was this? Plato describes, you know, the reason that Atlantis, or they thought the reason that it got ruined, was some sort of evil that they had been taking part in. What sort of evil was that? You know. Was it the Cain and Lamech thing? The, the things that they were doing, and it was having an, was it having an effect? Was God cursing them? Or who was God at that time? Maybe there were entities here that were capable of things like genetic engineering. All blue-eyed people may have a common ancestor. It appears that a genetic mutation in a single individual in Europe 6,000 to 10,000 years ago led to the development of blue eyes, according to researchers at the University of Copenhagen. Originally, we all had brown eyes, says Hans Aberg, associate professor in the Department of Cellular and Molecular, Molecular Medicine at the University and lead author of the study. But a genetic mutation affecting the OCA2 gene in our chromosomes resulted in the creation of a switch, which literally turned off the ability to produce brown eyes. Eye colour depends on the amount of a single type of pigment called melanin, in the iris of the eye, this genetic switch located in the gene next to the OCAT2 gene limits the production of melanin in the iris, effectively diluting brown eyes to blue. Right, so you could go say, so what? So what? What's eye colour got to do with anything? Okay, but if there's a if there's a genetic thing, or let me just carry on. In addition to having significantly less melanin in their iris than people with brown eyes, hazel eyes, or green eyes, blue-eyed individuals have only a small degree of variation in their genetic coding for melanin production. Brown-eyed individuals, on the other hand, have considerably individual variation in the area of their DNA that controls melanin production. All right. So what would eye colour, you know, if it was just the eyes that changed, then obviously you know, there wouldn't be anything in it. And that's what most people think now, you know, getting to the stage where we've got to stop going on about the colour of our skin, we're going to start going on about the colour of our eyes. <laughs> but anyway, right, so there, there's, there's a bit of uh, proof that all blue-eyed people may have a common ancestor. Now, coming back to my theory, what would the Atlanteans have done, you know, if... You know they got they dealt with Cain. They kicked him out, and he went and made his own stuff. Now he, you didn't want to hurt Cain because if you got hurt by Cain, you were going to get hurt seven times more, right? So you had to be nice to Cain. Now when Lamech comes around in his seven times seven karma strength, they would think, bloody hell, it was enough to deal with Cain. How are we going to deal with Lamech? going to make him too powerful so now my theory begins 
I think the, they shipped off the blue eyes to some remote island and just dumped them there. I think, in a sense, kind of feeling this was the right thing to do because otherwise they had to deal with the karma or maybe the karma sunk Atlantis. Don't know. Um, so they want to get them dump them on a on an island somewhere. Now, where? Somewhere remote, somewhere gold, somewhere north. And my theory is that they dump them on this island here off the coast of Sweden called Gotland. Now this map here is showing the cave drawings around Norway and Sweden. And as we can see from the uh, intensity of cave drawings on Gotland and up there off the to sail from Gotland to there and and here and here and here now if a bunch of blue-eyed people were dumped in Gotland some 10,000 years ago how long would it take them to start growing in numbers to becoming some sort of force well, we have the answer in history. <laughs> and the answer is about 10,000 years. But once they got to decent enough numbers, it only took them about 200 years to um, establish themselves in England, Ireland. France and integrate themselves into all of society at this time. What we see here is a map of Viking raids and you can see the dates on there 880s, 850s, just all within the 800s and early 900s. Within a Within a hundred years, they, I mean, I know this was a, a, you know, after the Romans had left, it wasn't a particularly strong area here in France, and, but really, they just, what did they do, what's the word for it, they just took over, invaded, they were unstoppable. Um, here's another one. Bit blurred. They had trouble down in the northern coast of Spain because there they had been well used to fighting with um, uh, the Moors, who were the. Um, they had a, a pretty big um, uh, empire in that time. Let's see if I've got a map. Unfortunately. Oh, yes, sir. It doesn't show their whole empire, but the Emirate of Cordoba, those uh, were Islam, and they had all North Africa and all around to uh, Saudi Arabia. They had all that. <clears throat> um, so they, they were strong. This is 600 AD-ish. So here in northern Spain, they were used to fighting. So they... The Vikings had a bit of trouble up here with them. But they came round, the Vikings came round and they raided the underbelly of France, Italy, over in Greece, and they popped down to North Africa as well, so they made enemies of them too. And the the big one, 859, when they came in here, 859 and raging, on their way out in 861, the, uh, the Islams here with all their North Africa, made these massive ships and were waiting for them in the stra Straits of Gibraltar. Took out about two-thirds of them, um, but uh, about a third still made it out. So they were faced with better technology. They were, you know, the Greek fire that was around at the time surprised them here in northern Spain. 
but they still endured? What strength did they have? And we can, you know, we can look at the you can look at the effects in the world now. Just look where the blue-eyed people are. They're everywhere. And they have this much stronger karma. This, uh, if you like, you know, it applies to everything, doesn't it? If you love a blue-eyed person and they love you back, you're going to feel that love back stronger from a blue-eyed than a green or a brown-eyed. So I want to take a bit look back at this, some ancient portraits. So we see how this guy is mentioning that originally we all had brown eyes. Um, some you know ancient portraits here. Uh, just scrolling down, and you can see they all got brown eyes. Then that guy looks a bit different. Now, if you look at records and they, if you ask if the Romans had blue eyes, they you'll get the answers back they're assuming that they did but they called them fair eyes that's that same one again he looks his eyes look a bit different but I'm going to show you some what I would consider would be described as fair eyes and you can see it in people today often in uh, like Afghanistan and stuff sort of a very bright but brown eye uh, my one of my friends had like got golden eyes I think it's one of the best color eyes you can get so the uh, the case is mounting that blue eyes is a new thing is something different with someone messing around with um, DNA and also, interestingly, the Greeks talked about blue eyes, that, that, that the gods had blue eyes. So that's interesting as well. And the Atlantis, because it was, you know, all these islands, circular islands were surrounded with water, would have looked like a blue eye. It's known also as the blue eye of Africa. Um... So the evidence is that we all would have had brown eyes and then at some point someone had came in blue eyes 500 years AD starting to come out of their area and find it so easy to raid other people. They found it easy. And how they, how they, within a couple of hundred years, or maybe three, even more, four hundred years, were just taking over. And it, you know, it didn't stop there either, did it? It went to America. It went all over the world. Here's some Viking voyages. And everywhere they voyaged, they made trouble. Again, the cave drawings. These are the languages that were being spoken. The Scandinavian language does come from a northern Germanic. They could have been speaking a completely different language. They've got a completely different story as well on how... Uh, you know, everything, existence came into being and it is the bizarrest story ever. So languages could have kind of melded together and spread around. Um, this, was an, uh, uh, this was a map from 1100. So what things were like after the, the Vikings. So they didn't necessarily, I mean, they did take over Britain. Britain was pretty much taken over by Vikings except that they'd converted to Christianity and they did convert to Christianity so on one side you've got the religion the wars of religion which religion is going to win out okay but then you've got which peoples are going to win out 
you know, they were big, big on slaves. Uh, again, it's a, it's, it's a karma thing. For one blue-eyed person is worth 47 brown-eyed in karma. Who, if, if you, who do you want fighting on your side? If uh, one of your guys gets killed, and there's a karma that's going to go out from that. Do you want it to be 47 times as strong, or oh, sorry, 49, or, or just one times as strong? It's going to have an effect, and I think you can see. Just try. It's difficult to get the facts on death figures throughout the wars and everything on each side, and with each side, how many blue-eyed people would you have had? But I think you can definitely see it in the way the wars have played out. That the blue eyes always win. Here's a map I just want to show Katagat, if anyone's watched uh, Vikings. These are the Katagat Straits, the water, I believe. Or is that an island? I'm not sure. Um, this was Middle East Bronze Age. So one of my points with this is that they were already very well established nations and peoples and their technologies were, were growing yet. They weren't a threat to the Vikings. I mean, probably they weren't interested in going up to Sweden and invading. But if the Vikings were causing so much trouble for a good 200 years, why didn't they do anything about it? Interesting. Okay. So that was those pictures I did. Yeah. Uh, that was all the research I could go into. And, uh, yeah, that's what I think. That's what I think. So, how's everyone doing? England are winning. That's good, isn't it? I don't know, shall I play a song? <laughs> Can I write the theme tune? <coughs> oh, nails need cutting. Damn. <laughs> I cry all the time 
walk in the morning and I step outside and I take a deep breath and I get me high and I scream the top of my lungs.